Welcome to Sati Online Television. I'm your host, Nomu Sakrembi. The South African Democratic Teachers Union shall, from the 25th to the 28th of September, hold its 10th National Congress at the Beachwood Hotel or Tambo Conference Center in Boxberg. Close to 2,000 delegates from the nine provinces, guests from sister unions and other stakeholders are expected to attend. As we count the days towards the 10th Congress, we have in the studio today our General Secretary, who has recently been elected as the President of Education International. His leadership will now extend to guiding a vast global federation comprising of 383 member organizations across 178 countries and territories, representing over 32 million educators and education support personnel. Welcome to Sato Online Television, GS. Thank you very much for having me here. Before we venture into our 10th Congress, would like to congratulate you again for the position that you have attained as president of Education International. Indeed, it is an honor that you have been entrusted with such a position. What does your election as the president, what does it mean to you for SATU, for South Africa and for the EI? Let me thank you for uh, the opportunity, but also really acknowledge uh, the work that SATU has done and uh, the support that SATU has given me uh, to lead at an international level as a president of Education International. Um, for me, uh, basically, uh, it means um, an opportunity uh, for, for South Africa to be able to share the experiences, but also to influence UNESCO, to influence any other UN um, you know, organs um, uh, when it comes to educational issues, um, especially coming from the COVID-19, that Africa as a continent um, has really um, had many problems that we still have got to attend to, uh, but obviously the, the issues were illuminated more during COVID, which therefore it's a challenge for any president of EI, especially coming from Africa and South Africa myself, that is to be able to take that agenda um, at an international level to really highlight the plight um, of the African continent and South Africa, uh, whilst we're still dealing with many, many other issues uh, of infrastructure, issues of girl children uh, that basically are excluded from school, uh, issues of lack of teachers in the Sub-Saharan in particular. So that um, is it's a responsibility that I have accepted as an honor as well, and uh, to, to really be able to represent um, the people of this continent and the world uh, at large. But for Satu, it means um, obviously an influence that Satu will also be having now at the level of um, you know international bodies where EI participates uh, in a number of uh, you know uh, organization that basically are driving education. You can take um, you know uh, education cannot wait, for example. Uh, where in, 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 in countries that are experiencing war um, and violence, uh, where uh, children are really in refugee camps and so forth, we need to be able to intervene and make sure that education takes place there. So South Africa has an opportunity to be able to really make an influence, but obviously share its experience. Because South Africa has got migrants who are coming from Zimbabwe, are coming from Mozambique, who are coming from many other countries who are in South Africa, and, uh, and how different are we doing things. So that experience can be shared at an international level because we're living as families in South Africa where we don't have refugee camps, uh, but we have got more than 6 million uh, migrants who have come to South Africa and living together um, um, uh, in, you know, and their, their children receiving education and health and so forth. So that's where I think we can share that experience of South Africa um, as, as, as a, now holding this position of education international as, as, as a president. But critical for education, uh, it's, it's about, AI believes in research, it believes in evidence for us to be able to, you know, uh, run campaigns like, you know, go public fund education. How are we going to address the issues of teacher shortages? How are we going to address the issues of mental health uh, of educators and education support personnel and so forth? So in that particular, uh, you know, um, campaign, 
uh, South Africa will benefit in terms of the research that EI conduct and the research that EI does because we believe in evidence, we believe in the research and so forth. So I believe that uh, my participation will then benefit SATU uh, to, be, to, to, be, to be able to utilize the resources that are there and the resources basically are human beings. We have got myself, we have got others that we can be able to utilize to be able to run these particular campaigns and be successful in making sure that we increase the budget for education in the world, uh, in Africa in particular, where we see that um, um, you know, tax evasion is, is really um, worse in, 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 in Africa. And whilst we need money for the education, I think that is my role to play, that I will be playing to making sure that we expose these things, but at the same time engage and make sure that we address these particular issues with the you know, African unions, uh, European unions, at the, nation, at the United, United Nations level, World Bank, which obviously believes in privatization, where my role as well as a, you know the, the public um, representative of the teachers of the world would be to interact with those particular bodies. You received many messages congratulating you, and some of the messages came direct from our government, our South African government. They congratulated even the Minister of Basic Education. What does that say to relations between government and, and, and the union, because one would tend to believe that uh, the relations between government and unions, or government and unions, do not, do not, do, do not see eye to eye. What does that say to? I think the congratulatory messages from government or from any other officials of government and the, the ones I receive from political organizations and so forth, basically, um, this is due to Satu. Satu is a player. Satu is an influencer and Satu uh, leads. Satu has been able to work so hard in making sure that we are able to have, you know, what we call labor collaboration or labor management in our country, where we have said, yes, the relationship is conflictual, but at the same time is collaborative. Uh, because we need to have labor peace. So I take the message from government as informed that uh, uh, we have this particular relationship that is understandable, that is open. It is that today we have a conflict, tomorrow we have got to collaborate and resolve the same conflict. So that's how I understand the message that is coming from there. But critical is the message to Satu, is to, is to congratulate Satu for having been able to be at that particular um, position of uh, presidency at, uh, at international level. It is indeed an honor. Let us go back to the Congress. A key feature of any Congress, it's its theme. We have adopted uh, our theme. What motivated Satu to adopt this theme? First and foremost is that every Congress which comes over, whether it's four years or five years, we look at um, the material conditions obtaining and then, then we then say for the next five years, what is it that we want to achieve? And I must say the outcome of the election influenced the theme this time around. Because when you mobilize in the consciousness of the revolutionary professionals being those who work in education, um, have a responsibility to build a country, we're informed by the fact that 11 million people did not go and vote. And the question that we were asking is that, uh, what have we done as education? Have we done voter education? Have we done register, you know, registration education? Have we been able to say to our people, we are intellectuals, we are academics, we are teachers. Have we provided our skills, our knowledge to the people? Have we done that? And when we're asking that particular question, and the answer says, we haven't done a lot, enough to making sure that people understand their responsibilities, that democracy needs to be defended. You've got to work hard for democracy to be sustained. If you don't, democracy can then be taken away anytime. Hence, we then says, let's mobilize the consciousness. In other words, let's reawaken the people to understand that whilst we're still sleeping, Democracy is slipping away, okay, in our hands. Our freedoms, our rights, our trade union rights will also be taken away because we might have a government that may not respect and undermine the, 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 the workers and the condition of service of the workers. And because our manif the manifesto of the DA was telling us very clear 
that the DA was going to target Sato. So we are saying, as revolutionary, you know, professionals, are you aware that your rights are going to be taken away? Can you wake up and do your part? Go and make sure that you you bring to the disposal of your of the people your academic wisdom, your academic skills, and everything. And when we were saying that we need foundational learning and you know functional skills, we were saying we may be having educated people in South Africa, but when people are abandoning democracy and abandoning the revolution, then we need to be asking ourselves, is the education that we have received functional? Is it making us to be productive? Is it making us to be able to defend our freedom and that which we fought for? Or are we then saying those who died, they died in vain because we who are alive are not able to defend it. And that's why we came to that particular theme to then say, we need a change. We need functional skills to ensure that our students are independent. Our students can cultivate you know, curiosity so that they can unleash the creativeness that they have so that we can innovate. And when we innovate, we can then build that which we call sustainable economy. And then in order to build a socialist uh, state in our country. The theme has got um, concepts such as, if I'm taking you back to what you said, unity, foundational learning, functional skills. Can these exist without unity? What is unity? What are functional skills? What is foundational learning? For any progress that we can make, we can draw the strength from the unity of our members, the unity of the totality of our profession. That if we want to drive quality education, we need the unity of our teachers, our education support personnel. Without that, we don't have strength. Without that, we don't have the power to be able to drive any change. And for us to drive change, we need that. So we have got to make sure that we have got programs that really are identifying the needs of our members, the needs of our profession, and around that we have got unit of purpose. Okay, and the purpose here is that we are having a, a reawakening program, which is consciousness. We need to really mobilize it and then people be independent in taking action to add value, to contribute. However small it can be, you can't throw your hands in the air. We have seen that happening. People walking away and say, no, the ANC is not delivering and we walk away. You're walking away from yourself. You're going to find yourself alone. So we don't want that. We are saying, let's invite everybody in. So that, that the, 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 the unit is very fundamental. It's very important. And, and for what is foundational skills? Basically, the foundational learning uh, it is to ensure that from grade R at four years, we be able to provide our learners with an environment where it cultivates that which is very important in life. There's nothing that you can do to drive economic growth unless at that particular level you don't kill creativity. So the foundational skills in terms of communication numeracy and literacy can only be able to improve your cognitive you know development if you are allowed to play in other words learning with play okay that's very important that's foundational for learning with skills in other words you need the real life skills okay you need to also be able to you know to 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 utilize you know curiosity and i want to repeat it again there's nothing you can do if you kill the curiosity of the children. In other words, you need to teach them how to ask questions. Important question, critical question, so that they can have critical thinking. And then with that, it brings about creativity. It brings about innovation. So curiosity is very important. So you must never have a situation where the classroom lacks creativity. And you take it away, you take music away, you take art away, you take sports away, and then you believe you can teach the children two plus two? Only that you have killed the real, real foundational skills that you need. Functional skills are skills of today. Your, 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 your technology, your STEM, which is your science, your mathematics, and your language, these are the real skills that we need. We need transferable skills. We need the skills that when we will pass grade nine, you need to be able to be functional with those skills. In other words, it can't be that just academic, you know how to read, you know how to do everything, but you cannot be able to fix anything. So we need 
you know, learning by doing so that we can improve. So the department calls it three model, what? Three, 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 three model. model. Mm. We call it functional skills. Mm. If we don't have those particular functional skills in, uh, you know, technology, because we have missed that opportunity in 1994, that you did not put efforts to making sure that technology, because we knew the 21st century is going to be driven by technology. We need to embrace technology so that we are then able to utilize it as a support, as a learning support material, you know, resource, but also to enhance learning and teaching. The theme says mobilizing the consciousness of revolutionary professionals. Mobilizing consciousness, it means our members or teachers do have the skill already, mm. or they do know them. We just need to mobilize. We need to awaken them. We have to reawaken it. We have to provoke them. Make them to be interested in their development. Make them to be interested in the country. You cannot have people saying, we're not going to vote. Mm. And as I'm saying, the outcome of the vote has really influenced this thing. To then say, this is a very dangerous uh, trajectory where people abandon democracy, where they abandon their responsibility because they're saying they're angry. So they have it in them. But we need to reawaken them. We need to provoke them. We need to make them to, to really say, you know what? I was here. I think I have more. I want to make sure that my skills, I give that back to the society. I need to pay back at my level of my school. I must do more to ensure that uh, I am able to produce a new person, produce a person who's simple, a person who's modest, a person who will not compromise on justice or social justice. In other words, when you see the sufferings of other people, you cannot, you cannot smile. You have got to frown. You must, you must be outraged. And that is the awakening that we want, is that we want that solidarity now. It's very critical that we are together, we are united, and then we awaken that spirit of uh, we can achieve more. Why? We need to defend our rights. We need to defend democracy. But if we are going to work as silos, uh, others are saying we are angry. Of course, be angry, but you can't live in anger. You need to come back and say, you know what? I think I was fatigued, okay? I was angry and the anger has driven me somewhere, but I still have a dream. Mm -hmm. Then you have to wake up that particular dream and then say, now I think I'm going to take this revolutionary stance mm -hmm. to work for the people. Because remember revolutionaries, they don't work against people. They don't, they don't deny people services. You need that level of professionalism to be a good teacher, a best teacher, to be at the best admin person, the best financial clerk of your school. In other words, you've got to give more. You must feel that passion in you. And that's revolutionary. In other words, people like Chekovara have said, you need a dose of love. You can't save the people when you don't love them. That's what we want to awaken. Let's awaken the consciousness of that particular love, that care for our people. And towards the end, the theme says, um, to advance inclusive, and sustainable economic growth in pursuance of a socialist society. What do we mean when we live in a capitalist society? What it means basically is that we have identified that education is a catalyst. And if we use education and we have the best education and we have you know, highly skilled people in the country, these are the people who are going to make a change. They will be able to build what we normally would call a base. Okay, in, 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 a, in a Marxist theorist, we'll have a base and then you'll have got a superstructure. Now, economy is a base. Now, if we, we have to build skills to build our economy, so we need functional and foundational skills for us to be able to be productive and build a sustainable economy. That we are addressing issues of unemployment, we're addressing the issues of, uh, you know, um, inequality uh, and so forth. Once we address those particular things and then every, everyone else is able to make a contribution, you are then going to have at least played your, 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 your small role as education because other roles will be played by others to build a socialist where you will then be able to have people participating with their consciousness and independence uh, in order to say this is what we want and then they will then be able to drive a government uh, that will then be representing the needs and the interests of the people. In a, in a, that's, that's, that's where you start building a socialist state because you are building a government that will represent the people and be able to change these 
capitalist system that is exploitative and so forth. So the base is first and foremost for us to change the economy of our country because with the capitalist system, we have seen people are disillusioned. We've seen the violence in terms of the protest. We have seen people burning our schools. We have seen people blocking our children. It all because of the economic situation, because it it drives people to feel that there are those who are are are, are benefiting and they're not benefiting. And we need to change that. And what we believe as said, the only way you can do it is when you can build an education system which is able to build the right skills and change the economic situation to a socialist economy and a socialist society. This Congress will be the 10th one, but right through, our themes have got a, a common thread. Our themes talk of quality public education. They talk of revolutionary professionals. Mm. They talk of socialism. They talk of empowerment. What does this common thread say about SATU, say about this union? Basically, it then tells you that SATU is a union in education. Hence, you talk about development. Hence, you talk about empowerment. Hence, you talk about skilling. Hence, you talk about educating and so forth. It then tells you, here's a democratic trade union in education that understands that there's a power and the power is in education. And hence all the themes, all the years, they'll be talking about that. Quality education cannot just be something that comes from mana, like mana from heaven. Quality education you build, and but to build education is to revolutionize the teachers, is to make them to be aware that they need to go back to their Friday, Saturday Friday, wear your regalia with pride, but not only with pride, but wear it with an understanding that you are going to be on task, on time, and you are going to work very hard. So it then says you need to discharge that responsibility. You owe it to the people, you owe it to your country in terms of the Freedom Charter, that you need to teach the children well, and then you need to love them, and love your people, and love your country. And that is the thread. Uh, that, that is there throughout our themes. It's, it's just about the people. It's about education being a catalyst, being a, a game changer, because it needs to develop the people to be able to develop their own country, to be a prosperous country and a united country. So that is the, the thread of all our themes. The Congress shall adopt policies through uh, resolutions. Can you just briefly take us through the process of coming to you know, uh, having resolutions and how they influence the union in general. All of it is built in, in our constitution. First and foremost, it says, is direct and indirect representation. That's a very fundamental principle. And what do, what do we mean by that? Is that a Congress, you have to have people that are coming directly from the branch. Now, this is, a, this is the nucleus of our organization. That's where we believe in the power of the, the, the workers because they are there. So why does it does that? What it does is then says, you will go into a mass meeting or a site steward council to go and elect a person who directly represent you. It doesn't say, because Malulek is a, is a, is a, is a branch secretary, it's automatic that must come. It doesn't say that. It says because that is direct representation, all members in that branch must elect a person to that. That's the first thing. So we elect that. And then, that's, that's the, then the second thing is you need to then draft motions around policies. And then they submit those particular motions to the general secretary and the NEC. And then those motions then are circulated to all provinces and other all structures. So we said, here's a motion from Western Cape, here's a motion from the Northern Cape, and therefore share. So that then each and every delegate who has been elected by the members directly can interact with any motion that has been submitted on time so that they can make amendments and then they can either agree or not agree uh, before they come to the Congress because the Congress can only run based on a motion. You cannot stand up in the Congress and say, ah, I think I saw an aeroplane. I want to paint the aeroplane blue or red. You can't do that. You should have told us some months to then say this is what you want so that we are then able to address that. So it, it so that's how we run our Congress. This is through motions and they are very important. Hence, everybody must participate. And, you know, sharing these motions, it be, we believe that that delegate and the branch executive committee 
uh, will then be discussing this in their branch mass meeting, in their site steward council meetings before they come to the Congress and say, this is the mandate I have. So our organization is run by mandate. And then I want to emphasize, it's run by direct representation. People coming directly from the branches, not only leaders. It's not automatic that a leader will come to the Congress. No, it is a elected person who accounts to the members who elected that was at that moment. Uh, from the motions and resolutions of the last Congress, the 2019 Congress, they came out a campaign which we called I'm a school fan campaign, a mm -hmm. campaign that was um, motivated by a lack of security in our schools. Are we likely to see this campaign going forward or is it going to all going to depend on the motions that will come that will come from the Congress? We are likely to see the campaign, um, you know, uh, continuing because as we launched that particular campaign in 2019, based on the policy directive that the Congress gave us, we have seen an increase in violence. We have seen an increase of people walking away from our schools. Instead of increasing the number of parents participating in our schools, we see them walking away from us. We have been told now, when we're dealing with the election of the school governing bodies, that there are fights now about positions there. And then those particular fights has nothing to do with the children, by the way. They have to do with the budgets that are at the school. So we don't, we see, instead of seeing an improvement, of parents supporting the principal and the, and, the, and, and the teachers to do their work, we see now that we have been seeing in private and in government where people fight for tenders coming there. So the campaign can't stop. Because why the campaign can't stop? It's because we want to have the community that love the school. We want a community that will protect that particular school. So we want a community that must participate and say, no, we elected you as the school governing body to improve our school and not close the school and chase the children away and beat the teachers, like we are saying. So that campaign will have to continue because we, until such time that we cannot see anyone burning a school when they want a tart road, until we see the community not shutting down our school when they are protesting against their councillor or their ward councillor, then the campaign will be live until such time that we all love our schools, we all denounce violence and we all see that we are caring for our children because any nation that does not care for its children is a nation that is doomed. The Congress is the supreme decision-making body of the organization and what, uh, you know, coming to motions and resolutions and all, it's quite serious. It's all serious matters. Yeah. Are there any lighter moments? Yeah, there are lighter moments in Satu. Wow, the, 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 the delegates, they sing. <laughs> they don't care about the chair of the session. <laughs> if there's time for them to sing, they'll sing even if you say to them, oh, come down. They just sing and then they compose. Mm -hmm. They don't come ready-made. Mm -hmm. The moment that they meet in Pumalanga, Northwest, KwaZulu, Natal, Eastern, just that meeting of the teachers, it brings that creativity. That gift that the teachers have, they compose. Mm -hmm. uh, you present as a speaker, when they love what you have presented in the next five minutes, they compose the song mm -hmm. about what you have presented. That's a lighter moment mm -hmm. uh, of the Congress uh, and so forth. That, that's, that's what we love about Satu. So the tensions, I must not mm -hmm. say everything, they're mm -hmm. very big tensions, yeah. but those tensions are swallowed by the mm -hmm. fact that we all enjoy music mm -hmm. as a tradition of, mm -hmm. uh, of South Africa. When we face challenges, we mm -hmm. sing. When we work hard, uh, you know, constructing the railway, uh, carrying those particular steel we were singing. When we were executing our struggle, we were singing. So mm -hmm. the singing uh, is something that makes us very happy. We can't wait for that all-important event, but I know there are other things such as the elections. I will say, um, SADU is not about elections. SADU Congress is about policy making. Once the policy have been determined, the Congress will then elect the leaders who must drive that particular policy. So we always don't put election, we put policy. That's why we put motions. That's why we say to the members, please come, represent them. And then they will determine, every Congress determine its own leaders. So we don't talk about it because we leave it to the branches and the provinces to talk about those things. But it is always informed by a, you know, the, the right moment. 
what is the moment now what is facing us now what type of leadership the branches would need and then it determines that so we always leave it we always we don't have to be worried uh, we know those who have the right to elect will elect let me thank you for giving us your time this interview is one of many that are going to follow thank you very much i must wish you all the best um, in making and growing the organization thank you for the opportunity i really appreciate it Thank <laughs> you.